in the wake of the Orlando shooting, the gloves have now officially come off. Not only presidential hopefuls, but with President Obama as well. For a while now, the main contribution of some of my friends on the other side of the aisle have made in the fight against ISIL is to criticize this administration and me for not using the phrase radical Islam. And I watched President Obama today, and he was more angry at me than he was at the shooter. What Donald Trump is saying is shameful, and it is yet more evidence that he is temperamentally unfit and totally unqualified to be commander in chief. President Obama, as you saw, unleashes on his critics and the big meeting between Clinton and Sanders. Political analyst Wendy Patrick, Laura Fink, join us with more ladies. Good morning. Always good to see you. Good morning. Good morning oh, some are saying the president was mad, mad, mad yesterday. Do you think uh, yesterday was an appropriate time to go after the GOP and all these issues uh, that are coming up right now? Laura? In case anyone was wondering what a president looks like, President Obama demonstrated that. He is dealing with issues of national security, of national tragedy, and he is doing it in a way that he has done it for eight years. I think that because he's been in the Oval Office, the gravity of these concerns and how they are attacked, he takes very seriously. This isn't a campaign for him. This is about leading the country. I think he made that clear as he took his critics on because the level of the debate and the pulpit that Donald Trump has to make these remarks eventually can impact national security. I think he took that seriously and that was those were the nature of his remarks and, yesterday. Yeah, and Wendy, you could see it on his face. You know, you could. He normally is a very stoic speaker. You don't often see a lot of energy, enthusiasm, passion, but you really did yesterday. It was apparent in his demeanor. It was obvious in his voice. So whether you watched it or listened to it on the radio, you really came away with a, really the effect that he meant to have. He's talking about some very important issues, and regardless of what your politics are, it was a, a very articulate, passionate speech. And why, and, and by the way, it's the first time he ever actually said the words radical Islam, so people are sort of seizing upon that. Hillary, by the way, actually said it in a different context the other day. But it really is significant because for, you know, after Orlando uh, over the weekend, we are dealing with some serious issues regarding gun violence, national security, et cetera. And he's tired of being accused, basically, is what he came away with. Now, did he mention names? No, but there's only one person that talks in tweets and appears on the cable news shows. That's nope. Donald Trump. And I think it's also about controlling the conversation because he doesn't want the debate to be about radical Islam, that this is really a mere talking point. He wants to focus on the issues at hand, which across the board, and I agree with Wendy, in a bipartisan manner, national security is an issue that a lot of people work on on both sides of the aisle and certainly the people in his government and in his administration are working on these really tough issues. Now is not a time to be splitting hairs over terminology and I, I think that that he brought the issues back to what was important and to what we as a nation face. Okay nobody was surprised that after what happened in Orlando the gun debate tech took center stage once again. Uh, gun sales spike once again. Uh, what is your take on this and, and will something be done? Will some changes be made to the laws uh, it, it, with November right around the corner? Laura? Right. Well, Raul, yeah. this, is, this is really a, a huge issue that we've been debating for years. Do guns kill people or do people kill people? Hillary says guns. Trump says people. That's totally simplistic. But sure. the reason I phrase it in those terms is to really sort of shine a spotlight on the reality that both candidates care deeply about protecting Americans, where they part company is how do we do that in an era of gun violence? Although statistically, many statistics show that, that gun violence is down. Now everybody wants to know, gosh, where do those statistics come from? But the reality is, didn't stop the attack that happened over the weekend. So in light of that, um, in light of the fact that the shooter bought his guns legally, this has turned into another one of these springboards for having the debate all over again. Lori, do you think this is gonna be the topic, the big thing people are thinking about when they go to the polls? Look, I think that we suffer from a mass shooting once every two months. There is the highest incidence of mass shootings than at any point in our history and that and greater than any country in the world. Right now, we are facing a cancer of gun violence and of violence. And to pretend that it's any one individual thing, we know that LGBT Americans were attacked out of hate. We know that the shooter attacked people because they, they were Latino. It was on Latino night. We know that there were mental health issues. We, and we know that there was a terrorism link. To 
pretend that we can't talk about any one of these elements is, is, is like saying, I don't want the radiation, or I don't want the chemotherapy, or I won't take the surgery. And in, within that debate, talking about guns is absolutely necessary. Talking about reasonable restrictions. The American people have horse sense. I think they recognize that this issue has to be talked about and that they don't want, they, they want a solution to these problems and, and they don't want to do nothing. And I think the, the greatest tragedy we have seen in, 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 in this arena, certainly in, in a very long time, th this is, it's affecting people viscerally. I think people empathize with the victims. I think they see that this is not something that we can continue to tolerate, no matter what the NRA says, no matter what the politicians do, that we have to rise up, we have to do something. So it will absolutely be an issue, and we have to think about how we respond to it, and the candidates have to think about that too. This isn't just a, this isn't a two-sided debate. This is about American values. Bro, well, one of the other things that's important here, uh, when you look at the way both Hillary and Trump are, are framing this issue going forward, is that this shooter over the weekend wasn't an immigrant. I mean, he was born in America. He was born in New York. Right. When you also add to that the fact that he bought guns legally, he had no reason not to be able to buy those guns legally. But having said that, Gun laws are for law-abiding citizens. Criminals, by definition, do not obey gun laws. That is one of the things that we have to inject into this debate, and I think is being discussed. Now, do we want to ban assault rifles, all kinds of guns, et cetera? That's obviously a different issue. But, and, and by the way, I just want to say, you know, we can't say enough. Our hearts and prayers are with the victims and their families. This horrendous crime, but what really brings it home for us is the fact that everybody goes out to, to nightclubs, restaurants, you know, uh, marathons, races. So this could have been anybody. It was attack upon Americans. <sighs> Take a deep breath and, and we'll move on. Uh, Wendy Patrick, Laura Fink, we thank you both for your insight this morning. Thank, thank you, Raul.